Hello, I'm Natalia Angelini. And I'm Nick Esterbauer. Welcome to Hull in the States. You're listening and watching episode number 565. So today we're going to be discussing a very recent decision that has come out of the Supreme Court of Canada by the name of SA and Metro Vancouver Housing Corporation. And uh, in this decision, the Supreme Court was for the first time, uh, to my surprise, <laughs> addressing the issue of Hanson Trusts. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting to see the Supreme Court mm -hmm. dealing with the idea of a Henson Trust. Um, in Ontario, this is a very common planning mechanism to help people who are receiving social assistance benefits, such as those available through the ODSB program. Right. Uh, and, and now we're seeing the Supreme Court look at this as well and, and take, take a look at, at an interest in the Henson Trust and whether or not that should be impacting those entitlements. Right, and just looking at what is a Henson Trust, there are some core characteristic features to this kind of a trust, and one of them is that uh, it has to be fully discretionary, so the beneficiary does not have, I guess, a, you know, a fixed interest in the assets. It's, it's fully at the discretion of the estate or of the trustee to distribute to the beneficiary. Um, another is that, I guess similar to that, the assets don't vest in the beneficiary, uh, and there has to be a gift over following the demise of that, uh, that beneficiary. Um, so in this case, maybe we'll just get into, into the facts a little bit. This case is out of um, British Columbia, am I right? That's yes, right. British Columbia, and, and it relates to a, a lady who was applying for, uh, I guess, rental relief that she would get every year. She, she was getting this rental assistance annually for I think more than a decade, and in the year that she had applied in this last year, I think it was 2015, things, or you know, her application wasn't accepted because uh, before her application, her father had passed, and she was a beneficiary of his estate by way of a Henson Trust. And so, when she submitted her application, it was requested that she provide, you know, the information about her assets, and her position was. Uh, you know, her, that her interest in this Henson Trust was not an asset. And she had provided as part of that application or at some point before that a copy of the order that set up the Henson Trust. So the organization was uh, able to review the terms of the trust and able to see that there was total discretion. She was not in, entitled to any of these funds outright. Right. And, and in the, the definition of an asset in these circumstances, um, it included an asset in which you have a beneficial interest. And so in the first instance decision, or in one of those two first decisions, because she was unsuccessful uh, in the first instance and then on the first uh, appeal, but ultimately was successful uh, before the Supreme Court of Canada. But the, the view in the lower courts was that having a, her interest in this trust did amount to a beneficial interest. Right, and eligibility for the the assistance in her rental payments was totally discretionary as well mm -hmm. and that's something that the lower courts considered mm -hmm. that she I mean there was no guarantee she was going to receive this benefit even though she'd received it in past years right. and I, I think the the assistance had provided something like a, a $500 benefit per month that reduced her rent right it was significant five or six hundred dollars about a third of the amount it otherwise would have been right so it was I guess definitely of, of a really meaningful contribution to her 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 finances right and ability to make ends meet the interesting twist in this scenario though is that uh, in this Henson trust she was a co-trustee together with her sister and we don't often see that um, it's more common I think for the beneficiary to be someone completely separate and apart from the named executors and this seemed to impact the lower court decisions, right, in terms of viewing that co-trusteeship co as, um, uh, I, guess, I guess, aiding in the conclusion that, uh, you know, she, have that, that being the beneficiary and the trust actually did amount to, you know, an asset, an asset of hers. And had she been a sole trustee, I, I think it would have been very difficult for her to assert that she didn't have control over the trust oh. and was able to direct distributions to herself. Right, right. And so, but the Supreme Court of Canada just didn't see it that way and uh, viewed her 
entitlement or interest as, um, as a mere hope, right? There's total discretion and there always has to be the decision of t decisions of both trustees, so it's not that she can ever act unilaterally. Uh, There's a provision in the court order establishing the trust that if, if her sister, who's the co-trustee, was no longer acting as trustee, she would have to appoint a replacement trustee so she could never right. be acting on her own. Right. Yeah, so in this situation, the, the Supreme Court uh, really didn't give too much credence to that that standing, her standing as a, as a co-trustee. And, and, you know, that's interesting because I think before this decision, we may have been somewhat wary in terms of, you know, advising clients to have the beneficiary also in that trusteeship role. It may open that door a little bit for for planners to to change the way they change the way they do things on that front. Absolutely, and I think it may have made, um, in some ways, Henson trusts more more applicable in in other provinces. I know earlier this, I guess last year in the summer, there was introduction of legislation in Alberta that recognizes Henson trusts being used to access benefits similar to OGSB payments. Right. So with this case, I, I yeah. think it looks like maybe that's something that's becoming a bit more widely available right. and legitimate in Canada. Right. Even though the court was careful to say this, you know, these reasons apply specifically to this case. So we can't assume it's going to be applicable, you know, countrywide. That's right. So the, apply to every scenario. the definition yeah. of asset from the application itself right. was something that the court took some time looking at. They mm -hmm. wanted to make it clear that they're not saying in every situation is an asset not going to include an interest in the Henson Trust. Right. Right. So it was a welcome outcome for the applicant in this case. And uh, I guess we'll see if these sorts of... Uh, if this, if this issue arises again in, a, in another type of scenario, what the outcome will be. So unless you have any other comments, Nick, otherwise I think uh, this is our, 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 I think we've summed it up for today, <laughs> succinctly. <laughs> so that concludes our podcast. Until next time, I'm Natalia Angelini. And I'm Nick Esterbauer. Should you have any questions, please email us at webmaster at or leave a comment on our blog.